This globally is the most effective way ahead to help countries deal with cybercrime. The different workshops and also a few months ago the United Nations Crime Congress agreed that there is a strong need for capacity building at the global level to help countries implement what is already there and here a stronger involvement, a stronger contribution from development cooperation agencies uh, is required. We should make cybercrime an issue of development cooperation. Uh, the different workshops pointed out uh, that there are many examples of multi-stakeholder cooperation, including public-private cooperation. Uh, in workshop 172, organized by the Netherlands, um, it was noted that progress has been made in the way industry, government, and law enforcement cooperate, coordinate, and share information. But in order to advance, we need to define more clearly who are the partners in these partnerships, uh, what are the roles and authorities, what can they do and what can they not do, uh, what is the mandate and legal basis in order to prevent and disrupt attacks, prosecute criminals, investigate fraud, confiscate proceeds from crime, um, and, and many other questions. In the different workshops, it was pointed out that measures against cybercrime are composed of many elements. That includes prevention and awareness, and technology, but also criminal justice measures. Uh, in, I think it was in the World Bank organized workshop where Wind and Surf uh, used the analogy of uh, a house on fire and the fire brigade. And many said, of course, the first priority is to, to put down the fire, to mitigate uh, the, the impact. But then the question I would raise is, if you know that the same person puts many houses on fire, then probably the most effective way ahead is to, is to go after that, uh, that offender. And if you know that there are about 100 criminals around the world responsible for all the fires, or for 90% of the fires in the world, then you should better try to cooperate to go after the, the 100 criminals. Um, we should also point out, and this was raised in, in several of these workshops, that criminal law is not only there to catch criminals and to deter crime, but also to prevent abuse of power, to establish safeguards and conditions in the procedural law, and ensure that due process is followed and that uh, rule of law and human rights are, are respected. Countries are rightly so very cautious when designing criminal law measures. And in this connection, it was felt that there's a need for a stronger cooperation between the ICT communities and the criminal justice communities when designing measures against cybercrime, and that not only at a domestic level, but also at the international level. And in this connection, this would mean that also the ITU and the Council of Europe and others need to cooperate much more stronger with each other. The final point that was raised is that perhaps we should think about a mechanism, a sort of cybercrime action task force or something similar, to mobilize resources for capacity building, but also to monitor progress made by countries in the measures against cybercrime. Thank you. Vielen Dank. Uh,